My name is Courtney Gilbert. I'm the Curator of Visual Arts at the Sun Valley Center for the Arts. And the exhibition that we have up right now is called The Unreliable Narrator. This exhibition is part of a larger big idea project looking at storytellers who we may or may not be able to believe. The exhibition features artwork by six contemporary artists, all of whom ask viewers to question the information they're being told or to think about the way um, that we tell stories and how that sometimes can be disrupted. One of the artists is a photographer based in Portland whose name is Holly Andres. She works often with models, placing them into these kind of complex situations that invite viewers to figure out the story and piece it together as they work their way through the photographs. The images that we have on display are part of a series called The Fallen Fawn. And it was actually based on a story she heard from two of her older sisters. So Holly's recreated that story following two girls as they find a suitcase, go through the contents of it, and then the viewer is invited to figure out what happens at the end of the story. We invited Holly to come spend a week living in the Sun Valley Center for the Arts in Haley, and she was really intrigued by the fact that that house is also the birthplace of the modernist poet Ezra Pound. So she decided to make a series of still life photos, imagining the house through the eyes of Ezra Pound as a child. They really invite us to not only consider what the house looks like through the eyes of a child, but also to kind of create stories around each of the images. Deb Sokoloff is a Chicago-based artist who has been creating these really wonderful artworks that combine text and image. Often she begins with real historical figures and uses elements of their biographies based in historical fact for narratives that may or may not be true and that viewers are invited to question and to judge the truth of on their own. We have a, a large kind of collage-based work that revolves around the idea that the CIA may have asked the sculptor Donald Judd if they could use one of his minimalist sculptures to send to Fidel Castro in Cuba as part of an elaborate assassination attempt. Jenny Kendler is an artist who's also based in Chicago. Her artwork is always asking viewers to think about their human relationship with the environment. And the artworks that we have on display here are part of a project she calls Nabokov's Invented Butterflies. They are paintings of butterflies that look almost like scientific illustrations. They're actually based on um, imagined butterflies created by the novelist Vladimir Nabokov. Not only do they present a false narrative of, of being actual butterflies, but Nabokov was famous for using unreliable narrators in his own work. Mark Dion is an internationally known artist who for several decades has borrowed the language, the methods, and also the presentation formats of different realms of science, asking us all to think about the historical relationship between the way science presents information and authenticity and truth. So we have work on display from several different projects. He pursued a project where he submerged objects into the ocean and allowed them to accumulate all kinds of growth in the sea over a period of time and then pulled the objects out and presented them as, as archaeological finds. He's really asking us to think about who makes decisions about what goes into museums and, and what's worthy of scientific study. Simon Evans is the trademark name for the artistic collaboration between Simon Evans and Sarah Lannan. They've become very well known for really wonderful, often very funny works on paper. The Divine Comedy is a sculptural piece they made using 2,247 3 by 5 index cards onto which they copied every word of Dante's Divine Comedy, or at least they claim that that is what they have done, and so we as viewers have to take them at their word because we can't access the inside of the sculpture. And the same is true of Yantra, this beautiful spiraling sculpture that we have, which are all covered with text and we can only see the outer layer and have to imagine what might be on the inside. I invited an artist named Gina Phillips to create a narrative installation 
She created an installation that weaves together a bunch of different narratives from different projects she's worked on. We have a whole wall that's covered with little tiny figures um, from a series called Heroes and Villains. And she was inspired by a 16th century set of engravings that were made in the Netherlands based on stories that were coming back to Europe of what explorers were encountering in the Americas. And these stories, of course, were you know, often wildly inaccurate, really feeds into the idea of the unreliable narrator and the way that propaganda can be used to perhaps lure people into believing what you want. So I hope everyone will come see the exhibition. I think it's a really great opportunity to think about the role that we all play in understanding and constructing narratives when we can't be sure that the story we're getting is the right one. There are lots of other opportunities to dive into this topic. We've got a lecture about fake news films, a play reading, and some classes.